Last season, the Florida State Seminoles were controversially left out of the college football playoffs. They were undefeated on the entire season. So many people believed headed into this season, it might be a redemption tour. This season, they could truly punch their ticket to the college football playoffs. Now, six games into the season, the Florida State Seminoles are one and five. They are 14th in the ACC behind Wake Forest, Stanford, Virginia Tech, and Boston College. I know you're not supposed to kick them while they're down, but if there's any team that needs a serious rebuild, it's the Florida State Seminoles. The craziest thing too is College Football 25 shows you the preseason AP poll. Going into this season, Florida State was the 11th ranked team in the nation, and even if they went undefeated from here on out, they wouldn't be ranked. That's how bad it is right now. 10-3 in 2022, 13-1 in 2023, currently in 2024, 1-5, but I have an opportunity to turn all of that around right now. So Florida State fans, you may not have seen the college football playoffs in real life, but I'm going to bring you there. I just don't know how many years it's going to take. Now, first things first, the Florida State roster is actually really good, and this is a four-star program. So despite them struggling in real life, this shouldn't be the most difficult rebuild. I think we've got a lot of good pieces here. Best player on this team is Junior Azariah Thomas, 90 overall corner. He's a stud. In fact, our top three guys are all juniors, so they should be even better next season. Shaheem Brown and Patrick Peyton. You gotta love having an edge rusher. If your edge rushers have quick jump, this is one of the best abilities in the game. Platinum tier is obviously the best, but gold tier quick jump. If you can get a player with that ability, they're really, really good. Much better than their overall would indicate. And Patrick Payton's also an 88 overall. Uh, two stud junior D tackles. Very important position in this game as well, especially in Sim. DJ Ukulele. This dude was in the same high school recruiting class as CJ Stroud. Is that not the craziest thing to think about? I still think He's a solid quarterback. He's obviously really struggling at Florida State. Everybody on Florida State is really struggling, including the head coach. But it's so crazy that CJ Stroud already won Offensive Rookie of the Year. This dude is still in college. Now, he is a massive quarterback. 6'4", 255. He's an 84 overall, so he's nothing crazy. I'm actually probably going to bench him. He's already struggling. We're not going to win it this year. Why not throw in one of these freshmen? Now, Luke Cromanoke. This is a freshman here. His potential is almost almost infinite. You always got to check players' ratings and see what they can max out at. This guy could virtually get to 99 overall. His accuracy will come just a little bit short, but he can max out everything else. I should probably redshirt this guy. Now, we also have Brock Glenn, who has already been redshirted, and he's sitting at a 76 overall. He also has really good potential. Now that I think about it, we actually will start DJ, but we're going to redshirt Luke Cromanoke. This guy looks like he could be insanely good, and we can keep Brock Brock Glenn just in case. The halfback position has a lot of good depth and our one freshman Cam Davis is actually really solid. Jalen Lucas looks incredible though. 95 speed, 98 excel as a junior. I'm gonna make him the starter. Oh wait, he's got a red shirt available. Ooh, I am going to redshirt Jalen Lucas and Luke Cromanoke. Those guys are going to be really good. Wide receivers, we don't have a lot of speed other than our starting guys, but it looks like Jalen Brown, the freshman, 96 speed, 95 excel, could continue to be a really good guy for us. Malik Benson and Ja'Kai Douglas, both seniors, both look really solid. Not much to mess with there. Tight ends are really shallow, but we do have Landon Thomas, a freshman, 85 speed, 90 excel, virtually the same stats as Kyle Morlock. I will probably start him instead. Offensive line is actually really, really good. Probably the best point on this team is the offensive line. If not the D-line, this D-line is also disgustingly good. Ooh, linebackers suck. This is going to be a big focal point in recruiting players. Jaden Parrish is a 67 overall outside linebacker. Middle linebackers are mediocre. Right outside linebacker is pretty solid. That is really shallow. Corners are very good. We have a lot of depth at corner. Free safeties are all right. Conrad Hussey is actually pretty fast for free safety. Strong safety. It's it's honestly very hard to find fast safeties in this game. So if you do find a fast safety, I recommend developing them. Like Shaheen Brown is really, really good. He's just 86 speed. That's very slow. Conrad Hussey is good. Uh, our kicker is really solid. 80 overall kicker is is nothing, nothing to complain about, and our punter's an 82. So we got to focus on linebackers, and I need to change the depth chart here so that this reflects what we're going for. All right, Jalen Lucas will get redshirted. Jalen Brown, I'm going to move to wide receiver two so that hopefully he gets a few more reps. I definitely want to develop him well. Landon Thomas, I'm going to make him the starting tight end. 85 speed, 90 excel. This guy is going to be a significantly better option in the receiving game. Morlock is rocking 73 speed. I'm sorry, but we're going air raid. We can't be having that. 
that. Defense is already really good. I don't think there's many substitutions I would make. We just need to recruit a linebacker because right now we're starting a 69 overall outside linebacker. And we are going to redshirt the junior Jalen Lucas. Pretty late redshirt, but we might as well give him an extra year to develop. Look at how good this dude is. 95 speed, 98 excel. This dude's a freak. He's also got five abilities, one of them being gold tier takeoff. And then we are also going to redshirt Luke Cromanoke. He's a 76 overall freshman quarterback. Hopefully at the start of next season, he'll be 78, 79, and then he can take over as a starter. We still should recruit a quarterback. We just don't have to. I think Cromanoke will be really, really good for four years. Oh my God, you know what? I normally don't do this with rebuilds, but since this is a middle of the college football season rebuild, I'm gonna make this ultra realistic. And it's gonna set us back a little bit, but I think we gotta do it. I'm gonna match Florida State's record to what it currently is. Now, as I'm recording this, they are about to play Duke. So, so far this season, it's a loss to Georgia Tech. It's a loss to Boston College. It's a loss to Memphis. They did beat Cal. It's a loss to SMU. It's a loss to Clemson. So we'll take over when they take on Duke with a one in five record. All right, it's week seven. We are one in five, taking on the three and three Duke Blue Devils. Obviously losing all those games made recruiting very difficult. We are still a four-star program though. So we still have a shot at a lot of really good recruits this season. At the end of the season, we'll probably lose some stars. That's not good. I've only landed one player so far as well. That's Marcel Wimbley, a four-star right tackle. Keep the O-line strong, I guess. I haven't been able to get anyone else because we keep losing. They're not interested in a one in five team, understandably. All right, things are certainly rocky, but let's not forget that this team is a good team and should win games, right? It's basically how it is in real life too. So let's play the moments here against Duke and see if we can get this team at least a few wins before this season ends. This should also help us land some recruits. So that's big. We're at Blue Devil Stadium. It's a rain game. They're bringing me in to play a little bit of defense. I don't forget. Our linebackers are our worst. So I'm going on Brown, one of our safeties here to play a little bit of defense. He throws. Oh, nice ball. All right, I'm on Hussey. There's a handoff up the middle. Good stop. Second and nine here. I did leave wear and tear on for this rebuild. Sometimes I take it off because it's kind of busted, but we're going to see if it comes in. RPO! Azarea Thomas reacted on that so fast. Instantly tackled him. He got a gain of one. Third and eight here. We know this is a pass. Let's guess pass. See what we can do here with Murphy. Nothing easy. Nothing easy! Azariah Thomas, this dude is a dog. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. It's a pretty wicked first name. But this guy is one of the big, big bright spots still on this team. And he just came up with back-to-back -back huge plays. Zero to zero. Nice work. Third and 11. I'm back in. Looks like offense is really struggling right now. But the defense gets home. That's definitely a big stop. DJ, get me in range. Give me a moment, buddy. Yes. Our first take on offense. There's DJ. Morlock is in. I don't know why Kyle Morlock is in. He's the guy I thought I had subbed out. But we'll get a nice pass in here to Toafili. Although that is fourth and two. Oh, they're going to have me go for it. All right, coach. I like that. I'm going to go with a handoff. You got to remember, this O-line is still nasty. Fourth and two. And it's too easy. Nice work. Lawrence Toafili with a nice drive right there. Dude, Kyle Morlock is still in. I swear I changed that in the depth chart so that he was not the starting tight end. But looks like Kyle Morlock wants some reps. And damn it, it's going to work. Because he's going to take 20 yards. I was talking shit about his 73 speed, but it worked just perfectly right there. And he's still in. They do not care what I had to say about it. Now first and 10. Holmes gets a good release. Duke linebacker can't get there. First and goal. Let's get on the board, Florida State. Dude, I love plays like this we got motion mesh spot gonna motion him across we've got a lot of options on this play and it looks like that mesh motion is gonna be the one beautiful buddy florida state on the board first you know what i feel like i've impacted this team enough and it's all florida state from there on out we are getting back on schedule but can we i was talking you up azaria you just got torched i was gonna say can we end this with a shutout that would be nice for the morale duke's getting up here to spike this football they're gonna have nine seconds potentially three plays although i don't know if they can squeeze three plays in here a sack would end it throws smart business decision they will have two dude this edge rusher number 11 is a beast third goal seven seconds left clean pocket that's open no, it's not. What a play. What a play. He leads that ball a little bit more. That is definitely a touchdown. Fourth and goal. The Blue Devils' final play 
Is it a shutout? It is, dude. Patrick Payton. Our two best players in defense were essential to that blowout. Apologies. Azaria Thomas, Patrick Payton ended this ball game. Both of them juniors. So we'll get them next season too. And Florida State's gonna get a W, 21 to zero. Florida State ended up closing out the season really strong. So we beat Duke. We did lose to Miami, who's eighth in the nation. So that was kind of expected. But we smacked North Carolina. We actually barely beat Notre Dame, which made us at the time ranked 25th in the nation. Naturally, we did beat the FCS Southeast and we beat Florida by 10. Now, I think all of that goes to show that the ranking system is broken because this six and six Seminoles team is supposedly 25th in the nation. I mean, we're 12th in the ACC, but we are we are 25th in the nation. That doesn't make any sense, but I guess I'll take it, right? Uh, DJ threw almost 3,000 yards on 26 and nine. It's actually a really solid season. 800 yards and four touchdowns for our starting running back. DJ had four and our backup running back had six. So it looks like in Florida State's offense, the backup running back might be a little bit of a touchdown shark. So I'll be watching out for that. And as far as receiving goes, it looks like Florida State spreads out the ball really, really effectively. The game completely ignored the fact that I subbed Kyle Morlock out, which is kind of sad, but that's all right. I'll make sure the right guy's in there next season. And Patrick Payton ends the season with only two and a half sacks. That's kind of sad. He had one in that game against Duke. And I mean, you got to remember though, that half of this season, I forced us a loss, which forces all of our sim player stats to be really bad. So there's not much you can do there. Three interceptions out of Azaria Thomas. Now for recruiting with all of those losses, it honestly was incredibly difficult this season. We were able to land a Brian Novak, Eric Brockle, and Marcel Wimbley. Two four-star right tackles and a four-star right guard. Every linebacker I went after committed somewhere else in those first six weeks. It was brutal. So we're gonna need the transfer portal to step up and band-aid some of these positions. I did land Nathan Kramer though. Nathan Kramer, four-star safety. He looked pretty fast or at least fast enough for a freshman. 87 speed, 87 excel. I I'm excited about him, but he is been tough sledding this season. Also just got Trey Knott, four-star center to sign. Beautiful. Jalen Milrow wins the Heisman. That's dope. 44 touchdowns, four interceptions. Okay, dude, th this is actually completely broken. There is no way we should have a bowl game right now. We beat the FCS Southeast Pandas. Why does that make me bowl eligible? Taking on Kansas State in a bowl game. Now, I mean, the nice thing about this, though, is like, yes, in real life, Florida State is struggling, but in this game, we have an 89 overall, so we actually are favored to win most games. Do we win the Duke's Mayo Bowl? That's the real question. We are 7-6, and six, and we won the Mayo Bowl. This is basically our Super Bowl. The Duke's Mayo Bowl winner. That's how you turn a season around, honestly. To have a winning record this season. Oh my goodness, DJ! ACC Offensive Player of the Week, 288 yards and three touchdowns. That's not something you're gonna see a lot. In fact, it'll be the last time you see it because he's out of here. All right, now we've got to try and convince some of these guys to stay. Shaheem Brown is the big one. Really need this dude to stay. Yes. Oh, Shaheem Brown stays. Okay, he's like the best player that was gonna leave. Really glad he's staying. Okay, Royda Williams, I actually don't care if you stay or not, but I'm still gonna try to get you to stay. He's leaving. Jacob Rizzi? I would love for you to stay. He does. I do want redshirt freshman to stay and any linebacker I need to stay. Nice. Okay, good. We kept everybody except for Roydell Williams. I did finally get an outside linebacker though. Rich Dreisbach. He's only three-star. Beggars can't be choosers. He was upper echelon speed, hopefully, maybe. He's a seminal, and we need backers. Get a few other mediocre guys, Kajon Banks, Traylon Ray, Daylon Cobb, and then I was just getting beat. I'm getting beat by Louisville, Pitt, Colorado, Wake Forest, Tennessee. I got beat by Marshall on Andre Yoshevis's brother. All right, it is a clean slate for the Florida State Seminoles. Our overall is pretty considerably down. It's the start of the 2025 season and we're shaking off the horrifying start to last season. The roster also looks a lot, a lot different. Now, Azariah Thomas is coming into his prime. Gold tier blanket coverage, gold tier knockout. He's a 92 overall. He still has room to improve. Dude's a dog. Jacob Rizzi, I'm so glad we convinced him to stay because he went up eight overalls in the off season, which is crazy. He's our second best player. Same with Shaheem Brown, our third best player. We convinced him to stay. Patrick Payton is now in his senior year. Darrell Jackson in his senior year. Top five guys are seniors. Jalen Lucas, as a junior, after that red shirt we gave him, is now our starting halfback, and he looks absurdly good. 95 speed, 98 excel, 99 agility. Love to see that out of your running back. Sean Murphy, middle linebacker, 89 overall. Now, most importantly, Luke Cromanoke is now an 82 overall. We red shirted him. This is technically his first year of college football. He's got 
gold tier off platform. So he definitely got a lot better from that red shirt year. His elusiveness is what ended up going up though. We really do want him to upgrade his accuracy. We have no control over what he upgrades, but like, yeah, I mean, his accuracy is throwing the run is really good. Deep throw is really bad. Definitely want him to, you know, kind of get it together here. Jalen Brown still killing it. Keyshawn Robinson, sophomore, 95 speed with gold tier shifty. LeWayne McCoy, 95 speed. I'm always looking for those absolute speed demons. They are really good in sim. And this game, for some reason, hates Landon Thomas. I keep trying to put Landon Thomas as the starter. It really doesn't want me to. Okay, so Jalen Lucas, starting running back, tight end. Landon Thomas is now the starter, which is how I want it. This guy is, a, this guy's honestly a beast. He could become really, really good too. Left outside linebacker, Amar Graham got a lot better. Sean Murphy looks good. And at left outside linebacker, I do like Jaden Parrish here. I'm gonna put LeWayne McCoy, the redshirt freshman, as my slot wide receiver. Oh, the season openers against Bama were so cooked. But I wanna watch this game for sure. This is the game of the week, apparently. How we are 19th in the nation after a seven and six season makes absolutely no sense. But I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to watch Florida State get molly whopped first game of the season against Jalen Milrow just won the Heisman. Now we're taking on Bama first game of the season. At the end of the first quarter, it's zero to zero. Bama's got three. We put up three. We put up a touchdown. There's no way. All right, 17 to 10. 17 to 20 though, dude. Tell me why this is possible. It's 17 to 20 with 40 seconds in the fourth. Oh my God. Oh, Luke Cromanoak, the redshirt freshman is gonna take off. Where are you running? Oh, he stepped up and then he ran. Oh, he was still trying to throw that football. Oh, the red shirt. Dude, you had room to run. Now it's third and nine. You take a sack. We have no timeouts. Cromano. That was such a bad decision. He probably could have got the first down. Alabama pass rush is crazy good. It's fourth and nine. We are not taking the field goal. It's raining. Our kicker can't hit that. This is for the ball game. Fourth and nine. Season opener. A chance to beat Bama. Cromano. <gasps> Caught. It's a first down. So we're gonna spike it, presumably save this clock. At the very least, oh my God, that was so clutch. At the very least, we can hit a field goal to go into OT. Do we even run a play here? I didn't think so. It's honestly a good thing we have a good kicker. Alabama ices us. It's the biggest kick of your life, buddy. A 36 yarder to go into OT against Alabama. Please. He drills it. There's no way. I guess I'm being a hater because I'm thinking of Florida State in real life. But in the game, they're really good overall. Yeah, I mean, they can compete with anybody technically. 20 to 20. That was such a clutch fourth and nine from the red shirt freshman Luke Cromano. Although there is still two seconds left in this game. It looks like Bama is gearing up for Hail Mary. Just kidding. They run read option. That dude could fumble. No, stop. Thank you. That's the riskiest play call I've ever seen with two seconds left in a game. A read option run to your quarterback. Might as well just kneel it at that point. Hey, it's college football overtime. Alabama wins the toss. It doesn't matter nearly as much in college because no matter what happens here, we will get a chance. Whether they score, kick a field goal, turn it over, we're going to get a shot here. Oh, Bama won the toss, but they elected to defend. Now remember, college overtime, you start on the 25. If you score a touchdown, your opponent gets the same opportunity. You kick a field goal, your opponent gets the same opportunity. Opportunity. We are just handing this ball off to Jalen Lucas. Gets tackled right there. Best case scenario, put in a touchdown and force Alabama to score a touchdown. If we have to settle for a field goal here, it could get scary. That's another handoff. But what did I tell you about Jalen Lucas? That is why we redshirted him. This dude is so fast. 95 speed, 98 excel, 99 agility. Jalen Lucas looks like he might get every single touch of this overtime. I kind of like this play calling because our quarterback is a redshirt freshman. If anybody's going to make a mistake, it's him. Just hand the ball up to Jalen Lucas. Second and goal, we got a backup in. That tells me we're probably passing this football. No, it's a fake jet zone. We are hammering the football. Third and goal from the eight. This is probably our last opportunity to score a touchdown. We do see a pass this time. Chroma Oak! It's caught. Oh my God, overtime touchdown. Florida State season opener against Alabama. I'm gonna be totally honest. I have no idea who Lee is. It's Darnell Lee, the junior, who makes the catch in the back of the end zone. This kicker is having a career day, especially if he hits this PAT. 27 to 20. Bama has no choice. They must score this football. If they don't score this football, ball game. If Bama scores this touchdown and sends it into second overtime, actually, we'll talk about it then. Oh my God. Oh my God. Where are you going? I was about to explain college overtime rules, but it may not matter. If we get a stop here, it's not going to matter. Second and 10, 27 to 20. Ty Simpsons motions the running back. Another laser beam. Oh my God, they're just taking shots. This one connects. Yikes. Unbelievable. I thought that was Ryan Williams for a second. It is not. That was Kobe Prentice. Now a senior. Takes that laser beam from Ty Simpson. All right, so they're going to kick this PAT here and four second overtime. Now Alabama will have the ball again. And if they score a touchdown, 
touchdown, they will be forced to go for two. You are not allowed to kick a PAT on the second touchdown of overtime. Granted, if we can hold them to a field goal, we could win off of a touchdown. If it goes into third overtime, that's when it starts to get real weird, but I don't know if I've ever personally watched that, so we're gonna find out. Ty Simpson, holy shit! That was Sean Murphy, our stud middle linebacker. Dude, these guys only know how to throw haymakers. That time it doesn't pay off. All we need is a field goal to win now. Now, most teams in this scenario will run the football to try and make this a little bit easier for the kicker. But we just lost two yards. I wouldn't be surprised if the kicker came out right now. Now, fun fact, if you're a kicker, you usually tell your coach what hash you would prefer to kick the football from. And a lot of teams will just run a stretch to that side, down the football, and then kick it. But that's not what's happening right now. We are passing the, what are we fucking doing? And it caught him. Oh my God, what are we doing? We're taking shots for no reason. I think we're gonna try and score this touchdown. The game is over on a field goal. And that's Jalen Lucas getting stuffed on the one and we're gonna do it again oh my god if we fumble this football i'm gonna freak out 27 to 27 goal line set jalen lucas one more time he dives in we just beat alabama second overtime season opener w against the alabama crimson tide the first start for our redshirt freshman and the player of the game is darnell lee who caught the overtime touchdown oh my god what a game is uh, we got this florida state we got this now that will absolutely Absolutely help us land some recruits. Now we're talking. All right, next game is against Florida International, then Kent State and Wake Forest. This is a cakewalk of the next three games. Then we got Virginia Tech, who's top 10, Clemson, who's top 10, and Miami, who's top 10, Pittsburgh, Stanford, Virginia, then NC State, who's top 10, then Florida. Wow. All right, and middle of the season is going to get rough. Year two ends with a nine and three record, although we weren't great in the ACC. All three of our losses in the ACC. One of those NC State, we only put up a field goal. Pretty embarrassing. We dominated Virginia. Decent game against Stanford. Did take a seven-point loss to Pittsburgh. And a big old goose egg against Miami. We did manage to beat Clemson, though. A little rivalry game. And a narrow victory against Virginia Tech. My favorite recruit from this season was Ken Ripkowski. That definitely goes in the Names Hall of Fame. Uh, he is an athlete. It says he's a power rusher, but we can always check on change position if he might be better somewhere else. He's a four-star out of Alabama. I like the kid. We actually did make the college football playoffs since we're ranked 11th. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't want this to be my playoff run because I think this ranking system is just broken, and I don't think we're worthy of playing this out yet. Regardless, we ended up getting absolutely shit on by Miami, 45 to 14, so it didn't seem to matter too much. The UTSA Roadrunners were the three seed. They also got smacked by Miami, who then beat LSU, making the college football playoffs national championship Miami versus Boston College. It is all ACC. Luke Kromanok in his first season had virtually an identical stat line to DJ's senior season. So that's really good. 26 and 10, almost 3,000 yards. On the ground, Jalen Lucas, who I love so much. I'll be so sad when we lose him. 733 yards, six touchdowns. He did have two fumbles. I love him though. Darnell Lee was incredible for us. Jalen Brown was also really, really good. Lewayne McCoy put in 500. Uh, Landon Thomas in his first true start, 300 yards, four touchdowns. I can't say that I'm sold on Florida State's offense. It doesn't seem to do enough for the quarterback. It spreads the ball out too much between running backs, and it, it almost spreads the ball out too much between all your receiving targets. I, I would rather my studs get the ball more than everybody be happy. You know what I mean? I just, I'm not, this isn't my favorite. Defensively, Joshua Farmer and Daryl Jackson are deep tackles heading incredible seasons, but both those guys are seniors, so we're losing both of them. All right, at the start of year three, I'm setting up my recruiting board right now. Top targets are replacing those stud D tackles that we just lost. I'm looking at Jose Torrance, Clark Carden, Dante Catula. See if any of these guys are gems. It's a hard no. That's a gem. Clark Carden is a gem D tackle. Remember, if a player is a gem, they are technically, skill-wise, one star over what you're recruiting them at. Now, the stars on your recruits will determine their maximum potential. So Clark Carden is a four-star gem, meaning he has five-star potential. So I really like this. It's basically a five-star D-tackle is what that is. Dante Catula is a broken gem. This works in the opposite way. So he is technically the maximum potential of a three-star recruit. So right now, Clark Carden is my guy. Ooh, 
dude. Look at this dude. Dylan Keaton, a five-star outside linebacker with 90 speed, 88 excel. These are some of my favorite players in the game. Fast linebackers change everything. So lots of good prospects in this season. The roster is back to an 89 overall as well. And now we have a 90 offense. Sean Murphy in his senior year, Azariah Thomas is gone. That does make me super sad. But we have two great linebackers, which we did focus on. Darnell Lee coming into his senior season. Jalen Brown's now a junior, 96 speed, 95 excel. Jalen Lucas's senior year. That does make me sad because this dude is such a freak, but he's looking really, really good. And Chroman Oak only as a sophomore. Now an 81 overall, 85 speed, 89 excel. He hasn't worked on his accuracies though. I can't force him to either. There's nothing I can do about it. He just, if he doesn't upgrade him, he doesn't upgrade him. He's still got 71 deep and ah, it's gonna be tough to win a championship with 71 deep accuracy. I'm not gonna lie. Camden Fryer out of the transfer portal, 98 speed, 99 excel. Keyshawn Robinson was already on this team. He got a huge upgrade, 99 speed, 97 excel. That's just from the off season. And Lewayne McCoy. Lewayne McCoy, now a sophomore, 99 speed, 99 excel. You'll notice that this happens to a lot of players and this is why. In the ratings, if they have an uncapped quickness, a lot of times they will prioritize this in the off season for whatever reason. And you get 99 speed, 99 excel. It's completely random if this happens or not. You can't control it, but it's awesome when it happens. I love that name too. It looks, it's so close to LaShawn McCoy. Is this dude related to LaShawn McCoy? Either way, that's gotta be our starting wide receiver. Yep, he's our starting slot as well. And you know what? I'm gonna switch to Oregon's playbook. Offensive playbook, we are switching to Oregon. We are going all out on these wide receivers. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna set the adaptive AI to aggressive. My no huddle style will be balanced. My offensive aggressiveness, 65. By the way, that stuff does matter. If you set your offensive aggressiveness to 100, you are going for two and going for it on fourth virtually every single time. We're going Oregon spread on the offensive playbook. I'm excited to try it out. It could be really good for Lewayne McCoy and Luke Cromano, both sophomores. The first game is against Rice. That's Matthew Sky's alma mater. I don't know that I've ever done this, but for the first time ever, I just completely mirrored last season, like down to the record in ranking. I'm 11th in the nation, nine and three, and I lost three games in the ACC, so I don't make the ACC championship. Championship. Uh, we beat Florida. We lost to Louisville, Miami, and our third loss of the season came to Virginia, who ended the season five and seven. AJ Swan of LSU wins the Heisman only through two interceptions on the whole season. And this season, with the same record and ranking, we actually miss the college football playoffs. This time, we're taking on Texas Tech in the Pop Tarts Bowl. I like this. This is how it should have been last season. I don't know how we made. Oh no, we're thirteenth in the nation now. Just kidding. Our ranking went down. A recap on recruiting this season, though. We signed Quincy Minnis, a four-star wide receiver. Josiah Sobels, a four-star right guard. And Jared Samaya, four-star right tackle. I am realizing that as I sim past weeks, it doesn't get to show me my full recruiting class. So I'll actually show you that in the offseason. Now, how did Luke Cromanoke look with the Oregon offense? He eclipsed 3,000 yards, a better touchdown interception ratio, but he's also a higher overall. I think excitingly though, this is what I wanted out of my offensive playbook. I want my best player to be a ball hog. And he was. Lewayne McCormick. McCoy, 99 speed, averaging 17 yards per reception, almost 100 yards a game, 12 touchdowns. It's an incredible season for him. Defensively, I kept the same defensive playbook. And once again, Daniel Lyons, it's always about the D tackles. Lamont Green did get home seven times. And as you can see, gold tier quick jump. I'm telling you, that ability is so important. Got six interceptions out of Earl Little, our best corner. Charles Lester had four. Corners on this team continue to be really, really good. National signing day, 2026. Got Jason. Zonda Mella, four-star center. Got a four-star running back, Montrevious Lloyd. And two four-star wide receivers, Terrence Marshall, Tank Hawkins. Another four-star right tackle. I do want to ensure that Florida State's offensive line continues to be really, really good. Now, at this point, I have two 99 speed wide receivers and then a 98 speed Camden Fryer. I'm so tempted to turn one of these dudes into a running back. I feel like that would low-key be so OP. Let's view it. Camden Fryer as a running back is an 86 overall, and he's only an 80 as a wide receiver. Tank Hawkins, who we literally just signed, is a 99 overall as a running back? Hell yeah, you're getting your position changed. You are not a wide receiver, buddy. Tank Hawkins is a 99 overall running back. He's the best running back in the league. 99 speed, 98 excel. He's got 98 agility, 97 change of direction, 98 juke move. Holy shit. So the only problem is it makes his abilities kind of weird. So he's got gold tier takeoff, platinum tier safety valve, which improves his overall catching. He is a receiver. 
receiving back. He can still get balanced, but he would need 81 strength. He has 49. I don't know what his ability to break tackles is going to be, but this guy is an absolute menace at running back. That's crazy. I had no idea it could be that OP. That's OP. Like, that's not fair. Hey, it pays to have that depth, baby. Oh, this is going to be a really fun next season. I have to step in and play with this dude. I have done many rebuilds in this game, but I have never once had a 99 speed running back. And at the start of this 2027 season, we've got one. So Tank Hawkins, we signed Tank Hawkins in the transfer port. He's supposedly a deep threat wide receiver. We switch him to halfback and now we've got a 99 overall. That being said though, this team did lose a lot of talent. Lucas Simmons is our best player on offense. Charles Lester's still here. We did lose a lot of players though. Luke Cromanoke coming into his junior year. He's got platinum tier extender, gold tier off platform, silver tier mobile resistance. This dude refuses to work on his throwing stats though. He still has 71 deep accuracy, but now he's got 99 agility and 99 change direction. So whatever. He's trying, I guess. Now when he graduates, it'll be either Eric Mashad or Joey Stranad, assuming we don't recruit another better guy. Krumanuk still looks good and he's been playing great. We've got too much depth at running back now. That is for sure. And even with all of that, we still have uh, two 99 speed wide receivers, Lewayne McCoy and Camden Fryer. So we're going to get the job done regardless. Landon Thomas is looking good at tight end. We have Juan Clapp. This is Will Clapp's uh, little brother. It says 56 left end, but actually I just have multiple really good right ends. Uh, there's Rip Kowski, who we were talking about before. He's looking really good as a sophomore, so he's probably just our starter at left end. KJ Sampson's really good, but D-Tackle's about to get super ugly. I have to recruit good D-Tackles or sign somebody in the transfer portal. Linebackers do look a lot better because we put a lot of focus on that. Corners continue to be really good. Free safeties look all right. Strong safeties look actually really good. KJ Kirkland, 92 speed, 95 excel. That's good. Oh my god, what better game than to try out our 99 speed running back Tank Hawkins than against Georgia for the season opener. Oh, this is going to be fun. We're an 85 overall now, though. That's not good. All right, let's play the moment. Tank Hawkins. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, we're at home. Opening drive is on offense. This is Oregon Playbook. And I have the fastest, the best, the highest overall running back in all of college football. Tank Hawkins. No, did I make up a name again? I have a problem where I just be making up names sometimes. 99 speed. Get to the edge. Ooh, what? Oh. I didn't even juke him and I juked him. All right, now we're in the red zone. It is Tank Hawkins, right? Why do I do that? Sometimes my brain will just like auto switch people's names. Oh no, I, it actually was Tank Hawkins. Tank Hawkins, the best player in college football. 99 overall running back. And he still can actually improve. Like he can still get better, which is crazy. Third and three. This dude is getting force fed the football. But all right, to some extent, he's just fast. Like he's not actually born to play running back. So I don't know if he's gonna power through anybody, but hey, his ability to get there is unmatched. That was a fourth and two, he got it. Now we go play action. They've seen a lot of run plays. And you know what we do? We throw it to the GOAT. Take Hawkins, speed, speed. Oh, he almost got there. Not quite, that's audible. To a QB draw, Luke Cromano. Don't forget this dude's a scrambler. QB draw, up the middle, Luke! Oh my God, big body. That was super risky, but it worked. We got another third down alert. Georgia did put up a touchdown though. So we got to put one up as well. Got Landon Thomas. We got Lewayne McCoy. Oh, Landon. Oh, that's a bad ball. Landon, it's 100% bailout. Ooh, great catch, Landon Thomas. All right, we are going to hand this off to Tank Hawkins. We're going to try and get on the edge here. Inside zone split, get all the way. He's so damn fast. <laughs> It's so fast. That's not how you run that. That was stupid, but damn, is he fast. Honestly, I just want an outside run concept, which Oregon does not have a lot of, but they do have wide zone out of pistol. I just need a mediocre block for my wide receivers. Oh, Hawkins is not in. Uh-oh, it's Davis this time, but Cam Davis is our power back. We'll take it. Now third and goal. Look who's back in, Hawkins. There's no way you can flag this man down. 99 speed? He got flagged out. It's fourth and goal from the one. We got to go for this. Full back inside. Look at that two star running backs. One on the left is Hawkins. On the right is Cam Davis. The 89 overall power back. Looking to punch this up the guts. That D tackle got such a good pass rush. He still got it. 14 to seven. And now it is, I think 14 to 14. It's 14 to 14. We got a two minute drill. That's the other thing you got to remember. Hawkins is actually a receiving back. Let's get this kid out the backfield. Oh, for 30 yards. Oh, he's gonna be so difficult. I mean, if they man him up, you, you either need a 99 speed linebacker or you just can't stick with him. 
That or, of course, you got to run a little bit of zone. Chromanoke's going to step up and take four here. We've got our timeouts. I just don't know that we're going to need to use them. Second and six. Chromanoke. Hit him. Tank Hawkins, baby. Safety valve. That's the other thing. He has platinum tier safety valve, which improves every catch he makes. We're going to give him a dirty wheel route here. I just got to throw this, right? I just got to throw this, right? No! He's so open. You know why we can't make that throw? Because Luke Chromanoke every offseason decides to run 40-yard dashes instead of improving his deep throw accuracy. Chromanoke can't throw a damn deep ball. Can he throw this one? He can! Camden Fryer! All right, he missed the last one, but he drills this one. It's first and goal. 23 seconds to take the lead against Georgia here. This is really big. Oh, I gotta hit my man. 99 speed. Tank. Oh, it's Cam Davis. And that's why the stiff arm is successful. Second and goal. 16 seconds left. Hawkins is in. He's gonna punch this up the middle. Nice and easy. That running back duo is so nasty right now. Two of the best players on this team are both running backs. Where's my boy? Hawkins has got a true route here. We've honestly got a lot of incredible options. There's Tank Hawkins in the middle. Wear and tear is eating away at him, though. I just saw it. He's probably absolutely gassed. What is the score? Oh my god, it's 35 to 14. All of a sudden, we're dominating Georgia. I'm gonna hit Tank again. Yeah, that wear and tear does not look good, though. 309 yards and three touchdowns for Luke Cromanoke. We're going with a weird motion here. This is going to put Lewayne McCoy. Let's not forget about Lewayne McCoy. 99 speed as well. He does look open, but look at A. Right in the middle, there's Landon Thomas. Make this first and goal from the one. And I'm wondering if we can't get Lewayne McCoy on maybe like a jet sweep or something. Look at this RPO read bubble. 299 speed guys on the options here. But I'm gonna audible this to the run. I don't see how Hawkins doesn't get this. Oh my god, that's how. Okay, 95 Agaboko. This guy's a freak. All right, return spacing. I'm gonna give Lewayne McCoy a little, a little drag route here on second and goal. Double team on the left side's perfect. I can scramble. Could really hit Lewayne here, but we're gonna give this one to Chromano for his fourth touchdown of the game. This is literally my first rep on defense. That is crazy. We're dominating Georgia. Fourth and one. They're gonna hand this off. Oh, I actually could have gotten that if I had played that better. Georgia does score. They're going for the onside kick. I'm not an onside return like an idiot, but we can pretty much put this game away. I completely glitched to that football. Now I'm pitching it. A W is a W. Just to rub it in, we got to pick up this first down here. Third and two. Chromanoke up the middle. It's too easy. He slides down. And Florida State's going to start the season 1-0 with a win against Georgia. This roster is nasty. 99 speed running back with the backup and 89 overall power back. Insane one-two punch. We have two 99 speed wide receivers. And Chromanoke's coming into his junior year and he's playing out of his mind. 317, 90% and four touchdowns. I am an excited man. Day two, let's grind. So our standout Tank Hawkins is a redshirt junior. And then Luke Chromanoke is also a redshirt junior. So I like our odds this year, but if we don't make it this year, next year is going to be like almost even better. Assuming Hawkins doesn't transfer, which would be crazy because we made him. Holy shit. I don't think in any rebuild I've ever done have I been second in the nation. Oh my god, the ACC championship is the number one and the number two teams in the nation. The ACC in this dynasty is like the absolute powerhouse of college football. All right, let's look at the top 25, bro. The top 25 in the nation? Dude, what? Where is the SEC? Like, I, actually, though, where is Alabama? Where is Georgia? Where's, oh my, look at this. Best team in the nation, Clemson. Next best, Florida State. We have one loss on the season. Stanford, North Carolina, Oregon, Nebraska, Middle Tennessee, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Arkansas. What is going on? UNLV, Colorado, Maryland, Tennessee. Dude, I don't know if I've ever seen a top 25 that does not include either Alabama or Georgia. No Alabama, no Georgia, no Michigan. This is crazy. You've got Ball State in here. Ball State is legitimately a 70 overall. They're 24th in the nation. This is crazy. I don't even know what to say. So obviously we had a really good season. Luke Cromanoak, 29 and 4. 3,300 yards. Tank Hawkins, 730 yards, 12 touchdowns. Unbelievable. Unbelievable season for him. Cam Davis, nine touchdowns. He's probably coming in on these goal line sets because he's our power back, but still, I mean, these guys are freaks. Receiving, uh, BJ Gibson had almost a thousand. Lewayne McCoy, 907. Jalen Brown, a really good season too. Nothing out of Camden Fryer is kind of sad because he's really good. Defensively, not too great sacks wise, but we got 766. I'll take it. Three interceptions out of Chase Tony. This is actually Kadarius Tony's brother, except he can actually catch footballs. And he's a middle linebacker. That is a super good season. 
season I loot Chrome and Oak. I think it'd be kind of unfair to play this game. I already played our game versus Georgia. So, oh damn, Clemson's a 92 overall. Let's just watch this game. I mean, the, th the beauty here is we make the college football playoff regardless. It actually doesn't matter. Obviously, we want to win this to get the bye, but we don't have to beat Clemson. We're going to the playoffs no matter what. I wonder just how impactful the 99 speed running back was to this. Like, is that solely what made us so good? Florida State Seminoles. I'm not used to rebuilding teams that are already really good, so this is super fun. All right, um, it, we're gonna, I'm gonna send to the end of the game here, and if it's close, we'll step in and watch. It is zero to zero, now seven oh. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh, wait, no, no, no. It could be, it could get close here. Let's slow this down. So we managed to put up a field goal there to make this 24 to 14. Clemson's in a really rough spot, but there's a two minute warning. It's college ball, so there's a lot of clock stoppage, and it's a two possession game, three timeouts. What they need here is a touchdown, preferably within 60 seconds. They start out with a laser beam there that keeps the clock running, though. They're gonna go no huddle. Chris Vizina. Clemson is literally undefeated. They have not lost a game until hopefully right now. The ACC Championship. There's a rocket. How did he not get tackled? And he's down the sideline. And he breaks a tackle and another. Who the, who is that? Oh my God, what did he just do? He had platinum tier shifty and he also just broke three tackles on the top end of that. Not to mention he was like six foot three. Yo, TJ Moore. The senior out of Clemson catches a hitch for 65 yards. This was an unbelievable run though. Look at how many tackles he breaks. One tackle broken, two tackles broken, stiff arm. Shit, he could have broken another one. Hey, I said Clemson needed a touchdown. Within a minute, they got it within 20 seconds. This game is not over. What a beautiful time to have a guy like Tank Hawkins though. Why it looks like we're running a play, I don't know because you should absolutely take this to the two minute warning. Thank you. So 24-21, two first downs would end the game. Depending on how we get them, there's Tank Hawkins dragged down in the backfield. Uh-oh. That, dude, if you're a Clemson fan, that's exactly what you wanted to see. Now second and 11, I'd expect us to run the ball again, though. Oh, we're gonna motion one man over. Is this a jet sweep? Fake jet sweep, handoff, Tank Hawkins. And that burst of speed is just crazy. It looked like he was gonna get TFL'd again. Turns that into four positive yards, but now it's third and seven. Yikes. Third and seven. Tank. Oh, it's play action. Luke Cromanoak is going to step up. Oh my God. Luke Cromanoak. Dude, he just put on the burners. It looked like he was sacked. Oh my God. Is that victory formation? Clemson burn all their timeouts on that. They burn all their timeouts on that last drive. Oh my God. Florida State is going to walk away with this. That was a miracle scramble out of Cromanoak. It looked like we were for sure punting that football. Oh my God. What a dog. Player of the game, none other than the 99 overall. Tank Hawkins, 79 rushing yards, 15 attempts, two tutties. I don't know. I feel like Cromano should get it after that run right there at the end. I mean, he completely saved the game there. TJ Moore is the most pissed off man, though. That guy just had the highlight of the century. This can be completely forgotten. ACC champions for the first time in this rebuild. Guess what record we have, gentlemen? We're 12 and 1. Florida State, that season was undefeated, and then they lost to Georgia in their bowl game, right? So 12 and 1 would have been their record. Well, that doesn't really make any sense. I, what, I, what I'm trying to say is this is redemption for Florida State, and we are most definitely in the college football playoffs now. Wow, what a game. If we can beat number one Clemson, we can beat anybody. I mean, we're not going to see any powerhouses in the playoffs because Alabama it didn't make it, neither did Georgia. ACC Defensive Player of the Week, KJ Sampson. Three TFLs and a sack. D-tackles are literally so important, dude. He also gets National Defensive Player of the Week. Granted, it was championship week, but we take those. Ooh, Connor Elam. There's our quarterback commit. Four-star quarterback Connor Elam. Oh, I got to go over recruiting. Gosh, I keep forgetting. I'm sorry, boys. The 2027 Heisman is a Clemson wide receiver who dropped 20 touchdowns. Holy shit. That's crazy. 2027 best running back award winner, Tank Hawkins. I have only ever done that one more time. That was with Nate Carter on Michigan State. But with Nate Carter, I was user controlling him every game for the most part. So I was like kind of force feeding him touchdowns. This is the first time I've ever gotten best running back on a simulation playthrough. Tank Hawkins got in the end zone 14 times, 808 yards, almost 200 carries. So you know what? His average still isn't that good. I wonder if he was in the Heisman debate at all. Probably not. I feel like 
Oh my God, he was. Oh no, he wasn't. It was, it was Luke. Yo, that was the Heisman battle. Luke Cromanoak was third in Heisman voting. Vizina and Noble Johnson were ahead. Those were the Clemson guys. Damn. This is honestly probably the toughest matchup we could have gotten in the first round because there's really not that many great teams still in this bracket, but Oregon is one of them. So Oregon's 11 and three, seven and two in the Big 10. This is the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Let me see this college football playoff bracket. All right, so Georgia State Clemson up at the top. Clemson ran through them. Oregon, Nebraska. Oregon ran through Nebraska. So on our side of the bracket, we've got Clemson versus Maryland. Oregon versus Florida State. That's us. And on the bottom half, like look at this. Wisconsin, Stanford, Notre Dame, North Carolina. And now it's Stanford versus UNLV and North Carolina versus Middle Tennessee. If we can make the national championship, it's going to be a cakewalk. We're going to have to get through Oregon and then Clemson again, though. We got to get through Clemson probably twice. Unless Maryland beats Clemson, I don't see that happening. We're going to have to get through Clemson more than once. All right, the Oregon Ducks, 88 overall. Overall, Seminoles and 86. So that's, I mean, that's a low overall for an Oregon team, though. Let's do some scouting here. Their best player is Javon Titus, middle linebacker. They've got some decently. I'm used to seeing all 99 speeds on Oregon, but they're not that scary. Delvin Charbonnet, that's their quarterback. He's an improviser with some good looking abilities. I'm actually not that scared of this Oregon team. They got a freshman corner with 98 speed, a sophomore corner with 98 speed. As far as Oregon teams go, I'm chilling, dude. Dude, Tank Hawkins, I literally love you. So much. <laughs> Tank Hawkins is completely carrying this team. He still can upgrade his elusiveness and his hands and his route running. He has no power at all, but I'm excited to see him as a senior. If he upgrades elusiveness, he's going to get like 99 spin move, juke move, agility, change of direction alongside 99 speed acceleration. Also, it would be really, really good if he could get like balanced or recoup or something. Our second best player, Charles Lester, is also a junior. Dude, these guys as seniors, like we could win the Natty right now and we'll still retain like a really large amount of our talent. We'll retain Hawkins, Lester, Luane McCoy, Trey Knotts, a sophomore, Chase Tony, Brian Novak, Amari Williams, Chrome Oak. Damn, this team is nasty. Yay, the college football playoffs! Florida State fans, you're welcome. It's really all I can say to you. I turn the lights on, you're welcome. I'm gonna take one drive on offense, one drive on defense. And we'll call it good. Also, Oregon's kicker, dog shit. Whoa, that was short. This season, our third down conversion percentage is 60%. We run the ball one third of the time. It's actually a pretty cool breakdown to see. All right. Chromin Oak, Tank Hawkins, Cam Davis. Talk about a running back duo, man. Let's go straight to Tank Hawkins. You don't have the best player in college football and not use him. Tank Hawkins is going to get a big shot to the nuts, but it's for 10 yards. I think we go Tank Hawkins legacy game here. Anyone else feeling a Tank Hawkins legacy game? Ooh, down the stripe. Oregon's pass pro gets there. Nice work. Kind of outside runs. Ooh, wait a minute. We can run load or speed option. Chromanoke is fast. He's a scrambler. I think he's rocking 80, 88 speed. Speed option to Hawkins. Going to get the pitch off to him. He's got the corner. Who's going to catch him? Oh my God, that juke is so fast. Bro, he doesn't even have any juke abilities. Is that just because he has 99 juke? That is so fast. All right, we're going same play. This time it's Cam Davis though. Got to keep them on their toes, right? Big power back. Oh, oh my God, Cam Davis. That's a holding. What's wrong with you? If I'm Cam Davis, bro, I'm in his ear. First and 19, got to go get it all back. Who else? See, that's called getting greedy. You got to get vertical there. Totally did not get vertical. All right, let's go for a pass here. Can't forget about our wide receivers, right? I'm going to take a bomb. I'm going to take an absolute shot. Chroman Oak. Oh, my God. Let's go. Hey, we still got wide receivers. We may have the two best running backs in the nation, but we still got wide receivers. Chroman Oak's looking good, feeling good. Florida State's going for two. Tank Hawkins, handoff. Cut it back. 8-0. All right, let's get a rep on defense. You know, this season, I have played a lot with my offense. I really haven't gotten too familiar with my defense. Here's the impact players. They've got Jeremiah McClellan and Robert Chun. We got Chester Lester, the molester. Sorry, Chester. I shouldn't have said that, buddy. All right. Lester is our best player on defense. So let's make sure we're on him going for the diving tackle. Just barely missing. But good pursuit angles. We still get there. All right. There's Lester. We got Dreisbach, middle linebacker, straight out of Germany. There's another handoff. Oh, ich bin ein Berliner. I don't know what that means, dude. I don't speak. I don't speak German. And I don't even think this is a German last name. I'd just be saying shit, you know? QB's gonna step up. Oh, <laughs> is that a turnover already? We are so hot right now. Gibson on the punt return. This low key should be Lewayne McCoy, but Gibson's also very fast. 
The spin move of destiny gets us to the 48. I'm going right back to speed option, bro. I want to see them stop this. He doesn't commit to Tank Hawkins. We got the crazy juke move. They get rocked for that, but it's second and three. That is the one thing, dude. If Tank Hawkins is not juking, he is not breaking a tackle. Like this guy's break tackle rating is like 40. Third and two. Gotta remember, this is a receiving back, right? Tank Hawkins, big spin. Another one. Wear and tear is hurting Tank Hawkins right now, though. Let's not forget about Lewayne McCoy, right? There's Lewayne McCoy. Ah, can't make that pass. That's a tough one. Second and 10 pass rush coming in pretty hot. Lewayne McCoy gonna need it. Oh my God, he caught that. This team is so good. This might be one of the best teams I've ever built. Uh, defensively, definitely not. But the amount of weapons I have on offense is unbelievable. Uh-oh. Chroman Oak. Let's get rid of this one, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Tank Hawkins is really hurting right now. We're just going to step up here with Chroman Oak. Oh, tried to get the first not quite. Third and one. Tank Hawkins is still out. We go inside zone, split to Cam Davis. He's a power back. We need a yard. You get the vibes. Come on, Cam. Big truck. Now, if you don't like this play, you don't like football. Fake toss verts. We're looking for McCoy. There's the fake toss. Nobody can guard LeWayne McCoy in man coverage. Oh my God. The fake toss. In the college football playoffs, pulling out the fake toss. That's nasty work. Two point conversion. Four man rush. Double team on the right side. Chroman Oak. Chroman Oak. Oak. Oh, 16-0. Florida State dominating the Ducks right now. Right, I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the game. I just don't see how they pull this back. 23 to 10, 30 to 17. Wait a minute. I right, honestly, I gave us such a big lead that if we don't win with the lead I gave us, we don't deserve to win. 30 to 27. Third and seven. Hail Mary bomb. Dropped. Oh my God, that was a laser. Dude, he jumped into that football for no reason. Just catch it in the basket and go down. We do not have a very good punter either. That's certainly not something I was recruiting. Holy shit, this game is losable. 27 to 30. They're in bunch right. Hatback's open. Checks it down. Great play. Tackled after 11. There's a check down to the running back. Instantly tackled. Second and nine. Holy shit, he's so open. What is going on? How did we blow a 16-0 lead? It's not over, though. I can't believe we dropped that last football, but this game's not over. It is 34 to 30. We got two minutes, 30 seconds left, three timeouts. Have to score a touchdown, though. I mean, a field goal does us no good here. Motion out, Tank Hawkins. Chroman Oak to Tank Hawkins. Safety valve, he hangs on to that catch. But I know Tank Hawkins is wearing tear to death right now. He was already wearing tear in the first quarter. It's fourth quarter. Is that the exact same play? It's the exact same play. I've never seen the CPU do that before. Literally just spammed to play it worked though first and 10 oh my god it's the same play again but this time it we're actually we literally just choked the college football playoffs to oregon oh my god choked a 16-0 lead dude it's so hard to watch your sim team just blow it though it's so hard to step in there put up 16 and then watch your simulated team just choke it away second and four if we don't oh my god and like what how do we not make that tackle this game's over now we're out of timeouts this game's over they can go victory formation or wait a minute not quite basically it's over but like what like what the fuck are you kidding that's crazy. Allowing them to do that is absolutely insane. I handed this team a 16-0 lead. Here's the thing, though. I mean, if I have to step in and give 16 points, we still lose. We never deserve to go in the first place. That The team is not good enough. It's that simple. So I am frustrated, but we just got to do a better job building the squad. How we bu had such busted coverage, though, is so sad. This guy had the freest touchdown. We dropped a free touchdown. There's not a man within 100 feet of him. Yeah, that's frustrating to see, but, dude, we didn't deserve to be here then. It's that simple. Really tough loss there, but... Hey, what did I say all last season? Every single one of our true stars is a junior, meaning their best season is ahead of them. Is this the year, gentlemen? I will say our overall significantly better. Our base overall is up. Our defense is up three. Charles Lester, the mold. I can't, I don't think I can say that word without getting this video taken down. Charles Lester is a dog. Oh my God. Oh my God. No. Tank Hawkins went to the NFL draft. He was too good. Oh my God. Tank Hawkins performed so well this season. Best running back of the year. Of course he declared for the fucking draft. Oh my God. Can we really do it without Tank Hawkins? Overall, the team is better. It is. Defensively, we're significantly better. Cam Davis. So, so Cam Davis is now the starting back. Let's not pretend like Cam Davis is bad. He's really good. 99 carrying, 90 catching, 99 break tackle, 99 change of direction, 88 speed, 92 acceleration. So obviously he's really good. He's got platinum tier downhill, breaking tackles at maximum speed, silver tier head first, and bronze tier armbar. But Tank Hawkins was the best player in all 
all of college football. You got to understand how rare 99 overalls are. Like, to really grasp how good he was. Because if you go sort by national, there's only one player in the entire league who's a 99. And he's not even technically a 99. He's a 95 boosted to a 99. Muhammad Ekwarukwe out of Michigan. Regardless, that's how hard it is to get these dudes. Luke Kromanok, his senior year, he's now an 86 overall. He's got excellent abilities. He's got platinum tier extender, gold tier off platform, 87 speed, 93 excel. And he still has refused to work on his deep accuracy, which is actually ridiculous that he refused to work on that. But I will say, Connor Elam, the freshman that we just recruited last season, if we can't win the Natty this year, Connor Elam actually looks really good. Impact dev trait, actually no. His quickness is maxed. His accuracy can't get much higher. He's not good. How about Damian Reed? Damian Reed with gold tier magician already as a freshman? He can't get that much better either. We're not cooked, are we? We gotta win it this year. We're we're actually, it's actually gonna get a little scary. We still have really good talent at wide receiver. Camden Fryer, platinum tier takeoff, 98 speed. That is a recipe for a lot of touchdowns. BJ Gibson's an 85 overall. Camden Fryer's gonna have a ridiculously good season. Amari Williams is insane. Quick jump pocket disruptor, 92 overall. Ripkowski looks really, really good too. I'm really glad we recruited him. Linebackers are disgusting. Look at that, 92 and a 90. Corners are excellent too. Obviously, Charles Lester, Kai Bates, and Jaden Sims. A lot of depth there. Free safety's good. Strong safety's good. Kicker's an 82. Punters are 79. All right. It could be it could be done, but it's going to get a little spooky. On the schedule, we got LSU, Northern Illinois, Georgia, North Carolina, Wake Forest, Virginia Tech, SMU, Miami, Clemson, California, Boston College, Florida. Yikes. The season went super solid, and it all came down to the exact same game from last season, but with a different opponent. The ACC Championship against North Carolina. Taking on the Tar Heels, we're 10-2, they're 10-2. Looks like the ACC is still completely dominant. I'm not going to lie, I think Oregon Playbook is a little bit OP. I don't know if you guys have ever seen my Madden rebuilds, but in Madden rebuilds, you could have the best team ever, but if you gave them a shitty playbook like Chicago Bears, they really can't win games. And then vice versa, if you had a really bad team, but you gave them Kansas City Chiefs offensive playbook, they'll make the playoffs like 80% of the time, even though the team sucks. I don't think this Florida State team should be the third best team in the nation. I think we're a really good team, but I think that's inflated by Oregon's playbook. So I, I might in future rebuilds ban Oregon's playbook because I really want to earn it, you know? I feel like I'm cheesing this, but I am happy to be in the ACC championship and I am happy to bring Florida State back to former glory, but that is something I wanted to talk about. Here's the top 25. We continue to get ranked so high. I mean, the, the look at this top 25 though. You've got East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, Louisiana Tech. I love it. I really do. Oh my God. And for a second straight year, Luke Cromano gets third in Heisman voting. I low-key feel bad for the guy. He's like right there. Roster is really hot right now. Everyone's got a huge boost. And look at this. Manasseh Atete somehow jumped up to a 95 overall during the season. This is a God-tier offensive line. Absolutely God-tier. 97 pass block, 98 pass block power, 93 agility as an offensive lineman. 83 strength, 71 speed, and 83 acceleration. 83 run block, 87 run block finesse. Honestly, sick. He also has insanely good abilities. Gold tier pocket shield, gold tier play action shield, wear down, quick drop. There's something so satisfying about a wicked good offensive lineman in a rebuild. So obviously the team is having success without Tank Hawkins. I hope he's having fun in the NFL, whatever the fuck that is, bro. We don't give a shit about that here. I would play this game, but the outcome, it, it technically doesn't matter. We're making the playoffs anyway, and I want to get the playoffs. So we beat North Carolina here. We get the bye just like last year. We lose and we just play in the playoffs like a standard team. This I'll know right now. ACC champions. Who got players of the week? Chase Tony. Kadarius Tony's brother. Zero interceptions though. I take it back. He actually is just like Kadarius. He cannot catch the ball. He's got five tackles. And then Luke Cromano gets offensive player of the week on 155 yards, a touchdown and interception. Was this just the most pitiful game ever? What happened in that game? What? 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 It was 42 to 14. Cromanoke had one touchdown and got player of the game. How did we drop 42 points? Okay, we utterly shit on them for the record. We beat them in literally every single statistical category. That is disgusting. Cromanoke, 155, a touchdown and interception. He must have had like rushing tutties or something. Cam Davis, 12 carries, 121 yards. Cromanoke, 12 carries, 62 yards, two rushing touchdowns. So they weren't counting as rushing touchdowns. He did deserve it. Although Cam Davis, averaging 10 yards a carry is crazy. Receiving, we were just spreading the ball 
ball out. Really not doing much. Defensively, an interception out of Chase Tony, Nathan Kramer, and Kai Bates. Damn. Honestly, we lost to Oregon because of our defense, not our offense. So I feel like having a better defense this year, it, we, we are a better team. We never really needed a 99 overall running back. That's not what was stopping us from winning. It was our defense that was stopping us from winning. Yo! What? Dude, this is, what is this, like the backup Heisman Award? 2028 Player of the Year. How is that not the Heisman? Luke Cromano, 3,365 yards, 30 touchdowns, and five interceptions his senior year. Is he going to get Heisman? Did he play so well that he got the Heisman? Oh my God, his ACC championship performance with 62 yards on the ground and two touchdowns on the ground propelled him to the Heisman. Oh, that's so awesome to see, bro. I am so glad I redshirted this dude. He won, he won three awards. Johnny Unitas, Player of the Year, and the Heisman. And he was third in voting before the ACC championship. This also means he actually won four awards. This also means that the two guys in front of him for Heisman had to have played like absolute shit. God, we don't need you, Tank Hawkins. Tank Hawkins, Tank Hawkins. I don't care if you won Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't care if you won the Super Bowl. I don't care if you signed an $150 million rookie contract. Cam Davis outperformed you his senior year. Tank Hawkins had 800 yards, 14 touchdowns, and won this award. Cam Davis did it on less carries, more yards, significantly better yards per carry. And Charles Lester won Best Defensive Back of the Year. Six interceptions, 61 tackles, and a touchdown. He had a fucking pick six. This is the best rebuild I've ever done. This is the best rebuild I've ever done. Shut the fuck up. Amari Williams! Nine sacks, 20... Dude, what? There is no way you put another award on my board. Florida State just won damn near every statistical category award. Are you shitting me? This team is so nasty. Chromanoke. I do, I gotta say, I got, let's put an asterisk next to it. Oregon's playbook is busted. That's true. But we put all the right players in all the right spots. It makes me so happy. Chromano, 3,300, 30 touchdowns, five interceptions. Nasty season. Cam fucking Davis on Oregon's playbook, which is like a pretty pass dominant playbook. Average six yards a carry, 15 touchdowns. Never fumble. Chromano had five and 536. That's what propelled them to Heisman, by the way, getting those extra 500 yards and five touchdowns on the ground. Cause there's no way he gets Heisman without that. Uh, we did spread the ball all out a lot. That's why we didn't win any wide receiver awards. BJ Gibson was our standout. Terrence Marshall was really, really good. And Fryer, 8, 13, and 4. That's our speed demon takeoff. Uh, you can see his yards perception is really good, but honestly, BJ Gibson was better still. He's slower and doesn't have takeoff like that, and he still had better yards per reception, which is really, really good. And then Amari Williams. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie. You shouldn't be winning the best defensive end award with these stats. I think every other defensive end probably just didn't have a very good season. Nine Nine sacks is a good season, but that's less than a sack per game. There just couldn't have been that many good edge rushers in the whole nation. I should want to check nationally. Yeah, this dude, Steven Cooper had 12, but he's a linebacker. So there were running backs with more yards than Cam Davis. He came in fourth in the nation in yards, but they all had less touchdowns. They all had less average yards per carry. So in the attempts that Cam Davis got, he was getting the most yards per carry and the most times into the actual end zone. Although I will say Greg Burrell, UNLV, this guy broke four. 46 tackles, 103 a game. Jordan Marshall, Michigan. This dude's a 98 overall. Good God. This dude's a three star with unlimited potential. That guy's a freak. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna hold you. All right, super fun season. Since we got the win against North Carolina, we get a bye. And our Orange Bowl matchup is against Penn State. This should be a good matchup. Let me see the college football playoff bracket here. Old Dominion makes it, but they lost to Notre Dame. So it's Notre Dame, Illinois, Penn State, Florida State. On the other side of the bracket is Nebraska, BYU, Wisconsin, East Carolina. This is an actual cakewalk. This is probably one of the easiest I've seen. I think worst case scenario is seeing Notre Dame. And then worst case scenario in the Natty is probably seeing, probably was Nebraska actually. Nebraska is so good in, in Dynasty for some reason. Honestly, a wild season. Let's play ball. Now I know what I said last season. I was saying we don't deserve to win if I'm required for the win. And I do agree. And playing this game does not guarantee us into the national championship, but I am going to help out the squad here and try and get us past Penn State because this next game would be the furthest we've ever made it in the college football playoffs, and I want to see what that game will look like. But I'm going to let Sim take over for the next two games, assuming we make it to the national championship. It's a tough line to walk. Do you want to just step in and win the game for your team, or do you want to see what they can do Sim-wise? I'm going to play the moments here against Penn State, and my first play is going to be a handoff cam. Davis! And that's why he... Oh, my God! And that's why he won Best Running Back of the Year award! He's an absolute... Freak. Cam Davis, senior year, runs over a safety, stiff arms another, 
and carries a bunch of Nittany Lions into the end zone. Big time touchdown, Florida State. Now they're calling in the big dogs, AKA me, to play a little defense. I'm on Chase Tony, our standout middle linebacker. Uh oh, 19 is fast as shit. They got nothing. That quarterback's fast as shit. Amari Williams is there, thank God. And we get the ball back. Oh my God, we got a safety. Dude, we have two of the best middle linebackers in college football too. Hickman Collins and Chase Tony. That is a draw. And there's Hickman Collins. Yes, sir. Gun empty spread, fourth and two. They are going for it. I'm sending a blitz. I'm going on Escalante. And I'm coming on the quarterback here. Checks down quick. Oh, goodness. Nice play. Eight. Penn State running a lot of empty spread here, but this is going to go to the quarter. It is now 9-7. to seven. Penn State was able to score. But you know who that is right there at quarterback? That is Lee Lowe. L-I-L-O. Yes, that is his name. We're running Wildcat to our third string running back, Rosas, on the unbalanced Wildcat jet sweep. I know Cam Davis is the man, but she got to hit him with a changeup every once in a while. It's a nasty play call and an easy touchdown. Defense needs my help again, though. Penn State is not quitting. 9-14, to Chase Tony. There's Charles Lester in his senior year. I'm going to use her him on this play. Got to check down here. Nope. Quick little one into the tight end. He's going to get nine yards on that. Yikes. I know Penn State. They love to hand the football off. Let's get, let's get, oh, no. <sighs> Get home. Get home. That's a sack. I was out of position, too. I thought they were running that football. That was Charles Lester with the sack. Hickman Collins is wear and tear to death, but I'm going to run this. I know my zone. This is my zone right here. Where are you going to go? Amari Williams once again. A big play. It's fourth and 21, and they're going for it? And they're going for it? Penn State refuses to take the field goal. Third and six. Uh, I'm going to hand this off to Cam Davis because that's kind of crazy I am. He breaks a tackle. You notice that wear and tear? Cam Davis is useless right now. He is utterly and completely beat to shit. You think we could get him with this twice? We gotta lean on our backup running backs. We're going wildcat on balance once again. Rosas! Rosas! That play is so good. Honestly, a bit OP. If I'm if I'm being for real, it's a bit OP. The computer just can't stop it. Um, we don't have Cam Davis anymore. We're gonna we're gonna have him back next game because it's just wear and tear, not an injury. But hey, Chrome Oak. Roman Oak won Heisman for a reason. Jesus. Never mind. That is a ultra fast Penn State edge rusher. They've always got a little Micah Parsons out there. All right. Oh, Chroman Oak. Oh, wait a minute. That's actually open. <gasps> if that's not play of the year, oh my God. My hands are actually burning up. This might have been one of the nastiest throws I've ever made. BJ Gibson, also a senior, rolling left, laser beam, back corner, gets his feet down. Yikes, that was crazy. In the Orange Bowl, that's a super clutch play. Now this is for the ball game right here. I mean, it's damn near for the ball game. Fourth and six. Penn State is going for this. I've got Chase Tony here. What do they see? What do they see? Quarterback's gonna step up. This dude is fast. Ripkowski gets to him, but a little too late. What is the score? I don't know what just happened. Oh, they were unable to score. Look at that offensive line. They're so good. I'm gonna motion him over as a decoy and Chroman Oak. That's how you win Heisman right there. You do it, you do it with your legs. Final play of the ball game. Fourth and 12, three seconds left. Florida State's gonna move on. Penn State got the nine points with a safety and a touchdown. That's all they were able to get. And wow, that's a pitiful ass play of the Orange Bowl. Florida State dominates Penn State. But that's, I mean, that's gotta be the only game that I can go in and play every play like that. That's just too, it's too good. I gotta let the boys win this one out with Florida State. But hey, we're taking the Orange Bowl home. Jaden Sims with two interceptions. Damn. That's also why Charles Lester got best corner of the year. Because he's just like that. Cam Davis, ACC Offensive Player of the Week. He really didn't get them any touches, though. I was worried about taking on Notre Dame, though. This was the worst case scenario. And here we are, Notre Dame. Oh my God, we are gonna have another good game. Dude, I don't know if my heart can take this anymore. Every game is a close game. Fourth and three, we're going for it. Oh my god, I didn't even notice that. Fourth and three, down by one. Almost in the red zone. Florida State's going for this. Why are we chewing clock here? Chroman Oak is just sitting back there wiggling his little knees. What are you doing, buddy? This better be an absolute heater of a play, though. There's the snap. It's a fucking handoff to Cam Davis! Who powers forward 12 rushes, 113 yards. He got met two yards short. But that's the best running back of the year, bro. Back-to-back -back years for Florida State. We got the best running back in college football. That's a laser beam and a tough catch. Oh my God, second and inches. Florida State's knocking on the door. Somebody open up. There's Cam Davis. Ruining his average, but an excellent handoff nonetheless. This dude's averaging nine yards a carry. We're back in gun slot offset. One of my favorite formations. This is what you run RPO peak zone bubble out of. 
We're gonna go check down right side. That might be a roughing the passer. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a holding, but no, I saw Luke Cromano get rocked. That's gonna put us on the three, I think. Puts us on the six. First and goal on the six. I do not like this play call though. First and goal on the six and we're running five wide. We've got Cam Davis. Coach knows better than me. Coach knows better than me. There's four yards. It's second and goal. And now Cam Davis is in. Look for a handoff left side. There it is. Oh my God, he broke the tackle. Notre Dame's defensive tackle blew that up. Cam Davis saved it from being a loss. I'd run the same fucking play. Third and goal. This might be another inside zone to the left. And there it is. But oh my fuck. God, Notre Dame's defense. These dudes are freak shows. He flew around that edge. We're gonna settle for a field goal here to make this game 16 to 14. Dude, three plays within the six. Roughing the kicker. Please accept that. Please accept that for the love of God. Please don't mess this up, Sim. It's gonna be first goal from the four. If we don't get a touchdown here, I don't know what it is about college football 25 Sim, but there's always something wrong with the kicker. Direct snap. Oh my God, Cam Davis. Wildcat. Read option. Stop it. What am I witnessing, Tito? What am I witnessing? We are gifted another opportunity and we run Wildcat read option with Lee Low and Cam Davis. Coach is out of his mind and I love it. I'm gonna be honest, I did not even know that that play call was possible. But now you've got a sticky scenario. 19 to 14 means you need a two point conversion. We're sending BJ Gibson in motion. He's going back across. This is a pass. Oh my God. Florida State just got gifted a touchdown from a roughing the kicker against Notre Dame. 21 to 14 looks a hell of a lot better than 16 to 14. I'll tell you that. Now, Notre Dame needs a crucial drive with almost no time left in the third quarter. They're going to elect to go to a handoff. They've got to start running back. But Kai Bates just blows that up. Dominating Notre Dame in almost every category here. we got a seven-point lead to show for it. Notre Dame, another? i got to say, I'm shocked by the handoffs right now by Notre Dame. I mean, they do have a lot of clock, but you think they'd be a little more aggressive right now. Down by seven, one game away from the College Football National Championship. And there's the pass we're looking for. Notre Dame loves their tight ends. It's a nice pass right there. First and 10. Clock's ticking. I don't think clock's going to be a factor here, though. Five-minute quarters are going to be all right. Another handoff to that star running back. Everybody steps up. I need excellent play out of my safeties today. I have to excellent play out of my safeties and corners. This is how we lost to Oregon. Just getting burnt over the top. That's why we need our safeties. Notre Dame, another handoff. They have handed the ball off so much on this drive, but they're getting three, four yards of carry. You might as well. Second and seven. There's another handoff. This one is stuffed. That's good defense. Hickman Smith is right on it. Third and five. Amari Williams, I'd love a sack right now. Great defense. Or great. Uh, oh, it's a fumble. Somebody get on it. We do. It's Hickman Collins again. I did not expect that. Wait a minute. This game might be over. Jaden Parrish forces the fumble. Hickman Collins picks it up. Look at the big boy. He almost could have had it twice. The D tackle couldn't recover it. Now it's first and 10. Cam Davis can put this game away. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do here. Here's one hand off to Cam Davis. Burst forward, breaking tackles. Dude, I have never seen a running back with platinum tier head first. Or no, platinum tier downhill. That's what he has. Platinum tier downhill. But he's, he's almost guaranteed to break the first tackle every time. That's what this is doing for him. He's unbelievable. We keep up this ground game and Cam Davis is going to put this entire football game away. First and 10, you bet your ass it's another handoff, Cam Davis. And right there. Head first, he breaks the first tackle. Take three yards. Oh, he's gassed, though. The backup's in. This is Lee Low. Two-minute warning, Cam Davis. Ooh, jet sweep. Fake jet sweep, zone to the right. Cam Davis bottled up that time. 20 rushes, 140 yards. I tell you what, though, we don't win this national championship. It's going to be another four years. Ooh, Cam Davis. If we don't win this national championship, it's going to be another four years till we even have a shot. We lose Cromano, BJ Gibson, our stud offensive line. We lose Cam Davis, Charles Lester, Amari Williams. This entire team is banking on winning the national championship this year. Second and 11. One more first down puts this game away entirely. There's that same fake jet sweep. Cam Davis is down. Now, this game isn't over, but one more handoff. We get the clock down to a minute, and then a field goal makes it to possession. It'd be really difficult for Notre Dame to win this game. Crucial field goal here, though. We do need to drill this. Easy, right? Easy. Easy. That roughing the kicker was the worst thing that could have happened in Notre Dame. The worst thing that could happen in Notre Dame. Notre Dame was able to put up a touchdown, but could not recover the onside kick. Florida State's going to walk away with this one. 24 to 21. Player of the game. Guess who? Cam Davis, 150 yards on 24 attempts. Found the end zone. Dude, if you're betting on Cam Davis anytime touchdown score, I think the odds are minus 300. It's like not even worth taking. This dude hits the end zone every game. This game, it was on a Wildcat read 
lead option. Jaden Parrish gets Defensive Player of the Week for forcing a crucial fumble. And Cam Davis, duh, duh. That's all I got to say. What did I say? I told you it was going to be Nebraska, bro. They're cracked in Dynasty. National Championship, Florida State taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The thing about Nebraska is like on paper, they're a really good team to face because they're usually not that high of an overall. They just play really good sim football. This actually makes me think I should definitely try out Nebraska's playbook one of these days. Because I mean, it has to be good. Nebraska is an 86 overall. That's a little bit lower than our overall. Yet they're always so good. I mean, they don't have any. They've got one 99 speed guy. He's a corner. It's not Rich Richie, uh, but he's a stud. They've got Craig Bull, a fast wide receiver. Probably isn't starting though, getting any reps. He's such a low overall. I mean, yeah, this like nothing on this team shouts that they should be in the national championship, but they are. Quarterback Emmanuel Clayton, a 79 overall. Hatback's an 84. Wide receivers are all right. They do have like one of the best tight ends in the league though. Morris Buchel, a blocking tight end who's a 92 overall. Got a really good offensive line. Edge rushers aren't too scary. A ton of speed at the linebacker position. Willis McGahee, the fourth. Kamari Brace. BJ Sex. Nice. Corners look good. I mean, it, it's, it's a good program. I'm not gonna pretend like they're a bad team, but. All right, and then for our national championship team, if you're skipping ahead in the video, welcome. I'd like to introduce you to your national championship Florida State Seminoles roster. 87 overall, 86 offense, 89 defense. And it's been all about defense this season. Last year, we had a junior, Tank Hawkins, 99 overall running back. Sadly, he declared for the NFL draft, so we had to make do without him. But we've got Manase Atete, one of the best guards in all of college football with insanely good abilities. We got Charles Lester the third platinum tier house call. Chase Tony, yes, it's Kadarius's brother. Doesn't have great abilities, but he's only a junior and he's a 90 overall boosted to a 93. Chroman Oak, a red shirt, Heisman winning stud quarterback, has been absolutely killing it. He's super, super fast. And frankly, this dude never worked on his deep accuracy. All of college. 75 deep accuracy and he's still a dog. And obviously he's a scrambler and it shows. Amari Williams wins the Lombardi Award winner for best edge rusher with quick jump pocket disruptor. He had an amazing season. Trey Knott, platinum tier outside shield. Cam Davis, best running back of the year award. Um, He's unbelievable. Platinum tier downhill. I never thought this ability would be that good, but platinum tier downhill is insane. He almost always breaks the first tackle. It's like he has an X factor for Madden. He's so good. Brian Novak, stud guard. Samir Hickman Collins, dude, our, our middle linebacker duo is ridiculously good. Rip Kowski, one of my first ever recruits. This guy's a beast now. This team is finally ready for the college football playoffs national championship taking on the Cornhuskers who continue to be dynasty monsters they just do we've got the edge though in this game I, honestly this should theoretically be easier than every game we played so far I'm gonna play one drive on offense one drive on defense and I'm leaving it up to the boys to close out the natty dude it feels so good after two days and five six hours of rebuilding it feels so good to finally see that national championship that gold trophy rotate around Luke Roman Oak, the leader of this team. He needs one more Heisman caliber game to take this puppy home. All right, my first offensive drive. It's third and four. Not my first, sorry. My only offensive drive. It's third and four. Need a big play here, and I think Cam Davis has got to be my man. He's such a freak. He's so good. I love Cam Davis. I thought Tank Hawkins was good. I mean, he was, but Cam Davis has a special place in my heart because also Cam Davis didn't declare for the draft like Tank Hawkins did. Ooh, it's a delayed blitz off the right side, and guess who it is? It's Cam Davis once again. Weirdly, I didn't get to close out that drive on offense, but it didn't matter because we scored in the sim. Now it's third and one, and Hickman Collins got to make a huge play. I form up the middle. Hickman, oh, I missed. That, that was such a wide open run for him. That was just too easy. Now first and 10, I'm on Chase Tony. No runs, no runs. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, it's a play action. Shit, I had to have left my zone open. Kramer, get down. Huge play on defense. That's a big mistake by Nebraska. All right, that can be the only input I have. Let's see how this game plays out. It's first and 10. Looks like Nebraska got the football back. There's a minute 30 left in the second quarter. So if they can score here, I mean, they tie up the game. Quarterback's going to take off. Yeesh. Jaden Sims was looking for a targeting call right there. Oh my God. I, you know, I don't think that the game knows how to call targeting. I don't think it's possible. Second and three. Bunch left. This dude just wants to take off, but not today. Third and 10 now. That's a big setback for Nebraska. 
Great, dude, that pocket was so good. We talked about that when we were scouting them, though. That Nebraska O-line is really, really good. My D-line is nasty, too, but wow, did they hold up right there. First and 10, a big first down, Nebraska. Sitting in the pocket clean, another clean pocket, dude. Nebraska O-line, these guys can husk some corn, dude. I tell you what, that right tackle has a brace on literally every limb of his body. He has a right arm, left arm, left leg, right leg brace. Just kidding. He didn't have it on the left arm. Regardless, nice check down. 28 seconds left. At this point, they'll likely get at least a field goal. I would love to keep them out of the end zone, though. First and 10. There's the snap. Steps up. Throws. Great tackles. That's why we got the best middle linebacker duo in the league. A 93 and a 90 overall in there. Second and nine. Almost got to the QB this time, but somebody's always open on Nebraska. I gotta try Nebraska offensive playbook. This is a sick playbook. 15 seconds left. It's a lot of, like, short hitch passes. And fucking deep corners as I say it. Nebraska just came up with a mega clutch touchdown. They're just good. I don't know how to describe it. They're just good. Black kicker too. Okay, Nebraska. I see you. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Hi I don't fuck. What is that word? DEI? DEI higher? Oh, their PAT kicker is black. Their kickoff specialist is white. A little Oreo sandwich for the Cornhuskers. I respect that. With six seconds left, I imagine we're just going to kneel this football. We are taking it to halftime. Seven to seven. Let's see what we can do. This is a defensive national championship. It's seven to seven here. We get the ball to start the third quarter. I got to see a lot of Cam Davis, right? I mean, we see a lot of Cam Davis. That's how we got here. And as I say that, we lose three yards. Jesus, Nebraska. The thing about Luke Cromanoak, Luke Cromanoak is good, but all season long, he really hasn't had to do that much because Cam Davis has been so unbelievably effective with the football. Now it's third and 11, and you're leaning on Luke Cromanoak to make a huge pass. And he throws a pick! That's the star corner on Nebraska. They've always got a star corner, damn it. Oh, that's exactly what I'm talking about, man. Chroman Oak is good. He won the Heisman. But a lot of the reason he won the Heisman is because he can run. 600 yards and six touchdowns on the ground. And right there, Ryan Mack steps up. One of the best players on Nebraska's defense. Yoinks that football. Now Nebraska is going to get a free red zone. Yikes, I hate this. I'm hoping this is a handoff because we can stuff it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's Chase Tony right there. Great defense. Honestly, we want Nebraska to run the football. Nebraska running the football is the best case scenario for us. When they pass, they're un unstoppable. That's a great throw right there. Third and four. Home to a field goal, boys. Crucial third down. Cannot let them convert this. They convert this. They're getting a touchdown. Somebody get home. Amari, I need you. Good tackle. Oh, my God. Angles, gentlemen. Angles. We had that. I think Nebraska is going to get six out of this. First and goal, direct snap to the halfback. It's too easy. Nebraska's in the end zone. Start this game with a 7-0 lead. It's been all Nebraska since. Now 14-7. First and 10, play action. Oh my God, Luke Cromanoak. That's Camden Fryer, isn't it? Camden Fryer is the only dude on this team that can burn somebody like that. Camden Fryer, 98 speed, platinum tier takeoff. Just like that, six seconds later, Florida State is going to tie this game up. And yup, that's Camden Fryer. Platinum tier takeoff is a ridiculous ability. And look at the separation. Now, the good thing is Camden Fryer is not actually our wide receiver one. So he rarely has the best DB on him. And it paid off right there. One play, 86 yards, nine seconds. It's 14 to 14. We are right back in it. 14 to 14. Nebraska's going to start this drive on the 20. I need to see something out of our defensive line. If we can't get on the quarterback, it's going to be a long day, gentlemen. Nebraska likes their eye formation. Motion the tight end over. It's got to be a handoff. And it is. We got bodies in there. I like that. Second and seven. Another handoff up the middle. This one looks a hell of a lot better. Nebraska's no joke, dude. They can run the ball right up the gut. They can pass all over you. They can go direct snap to the halfback. There's Chase Tony, though. I love you, Chase Tony. Second and seven. It's so another handoff. This one's a counter run. It's got unbelievable yards. Motions over a wide receiver. Fake. Oh my God. We almost got to the. Yes. Catches the football, but he catches it out of bounds. They lose three yards. Almost got the sack. Dude, we got to get home. We have, we have Ripkowski and Amari Williams. Somebody's got to get home on this QB. <gasps> Chase Tony! That's my boy! Chase Stoney interception! And he's waving the... Dude, who are... Are you CJ Gardner-Johnson? Don't wave him home yet. This is the Natty Chip, and it's all tied up. But that's a massive play. We start this drive in Cornhusker territory. They got three down linemen. Give that fucking ball to Cam Davis. Ooh, RPO. Second and eight. I kind of like that, actually. Four down linemen this time. 
Oh my God, that blitz was so hot. Third and 14, Jesus. I'm telling you, man, Nebraska is no joke. Third and 14, clean pocket this time. Dropped. Oh my God, and we got to pooch punt this. Yikes. Wow, we just completely threw that drive away. Chase Tony made such a good play for us. Punt dot. Nope. And the punt's not good either. Still 14 to 14. Play action for Nebraska. Hickman Collins could have just had another one. That's why he's a linebacker, not a wide receiver. Doesn't hang on to that interception. Another play action, Nebraska. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Third and 10. Dude, all the defenses are stepping up now. Crucial play. Third and 10. Amari Williams is all over the QB. He's got to throw quick, and they don't have enough. Now the defense stepping up. Fourth and three. We're having a little special teams war here. But I like this because we're going to have really good field position here. Yep, we're going to start this drive with the 40. Chroman Oak, a scary pass, but damn, that was caught. Dude, I got to see more Cam Davis. I am disappointed with how many times Cam Davis has gotten the football. He's too good. Thank you. Look at that. God, I should be a play caller. Tell you what, 12 yards right there, baby. First and 10. Guess who? Cam Davis. Jesus, just ran someone over. Only for two yards, but still a great run. Dude, I'd fucking give it to him again. Give it to him again. Don't even think about it. It's a slip screen. We are giving it to him again. Cam Davis! Daylight! First down. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. This is the best drive I've seen us put together in a while. This is looking really, really good. There's more Cam Davis. And there are so many more yards. You know he's... Oh, he does not break the first tackle. That's weird. You almost always see him break that first tackle. He is tired now, though. Low Lee. The backup's in. It's an RPO, and it's a great play. Camden Fryer is having such a good game. Four catches, 108 yards, and a touchdown. Cam Davis is back in on second and two. You got to imagine you're handing this ball off to Cam Davis. Hatback motion. What are you doing, coach? Like, honestly, what are you doing? Cam Davis just dog walked this Nebraska defense down into the end zone. And on second and two, you're going to throw back corner? Hand the fucking ball off. You're getting eight yards of carry. Horrendous play calling right there. After one of the best drives I've seen in a minute, it is still 14 to 14. Why throw the ball there? Because even if you get stuffed on the run, you can take the field goal and take the lead. That was just piss poor play calling. Although the defense stepped up huge last possession. Can they do it one more time? They start out with a great stop there. This is the top of the fourth quarter now. Second and nine. Another handoff, Nebraska. I think we have numbers. We do. Third and seven. They got a pass here. Can we get one more big stop? Let's get this football back. Come on, Florida State. Amari Williams. No, Ripkowski. Ripkowski, yes! He's still up! Ripkowski for the second time. Finally gets that sack. Fourth and 17. Nebraska has to punt this football. Punting out of their own end zone, too. This is going to be great field position. All right. I mean, Chroman Oak's got two INTs now. Just get us in range and get us some points here, please. Not like this, boys. Not like this. 14 to 14. Chroman Oak throws. Holy shit. That was about intercepted. Luke Chroman Oak, the most fraudulent Heisman in Reisman. Reisman. Read option. He got three, I guess. Third and seven, not an empty drive. Third and seven, we're going five wide. They got a three-man rush, delayed blitz. Gets the ball off, caught. Oh my God, what a clutch catch right there. That was Cam Davis as wide receiver. Just made that insane catch, first and 10. Quick little smoke screen. I guess we don't get the blocks to set up those. So we lose a yard, second and 11. Now we're too deep to run it. So Cam Davis isn't gonna get the football. Just kidding. We don't give a fuck. We ended up getting a single yard though. This is not looking good. Luke, I need you, buddy. Luke, it's been a rocky game, but get your composure right now. Get it together. And let's get a great throw here. Chroman Oak finds his man. Blown coverage. Oh my God, you rarely see our tight end get used in this offense. But that was a busted coverage. He's wide open. Now first and goal, please just give the fucking ball to Cam Davis, dude. Cam Davis, Cam Davis, Cam Davis. Yes. Yes, Cam Davis has it. I don't even care that he only got a yard. 14 to 14, national championship. Three minutes left. We are knocking on the door with some points. Fake jet sweep handoff, Cam Davis. He fights, but he's gonna lose two yards there. Oh my God, now we're gonna pass because it's third and goal. Please, Luke. Please, Luke. Ball security, Luke. Third and goal. Chroman Oak. That's fine. Honest to God, that is fine. We'll take it because you're going to trot the kicker out and take the lead. 32-yard field goal for the lead in the national championship. We need it. It's up. It's good. Florida State takes the lead, 17-14. God, this game is intense. First and 10, we got a blitz off the edge. Oh, my God. Nebraska picks up a big chunk, 30 yards instantly. They're almost across the 50 already. Two minutes, 18 seconds. They're in no huddle. Oh no! Oh no! 
Nebraska! That was on Charles Lester. That's our best DB. Just a, I mean, he just got torched. It's that simple. Got blown by in man coverage. Nebraska, just like that, takes a four-point lead. This game is certainly not over, though. Two minutes, 12 seconds left. Three timeouts. Two-minute warning. Let's make some plays, boys. First and 10. Motion and Cam Davis out. Chroman Oak, clean pocket. Unloads. Deep as shit. Oh my god, that was Camden Fryer again. That time it was very well defended by Nebraska. Two minutes, two seconds. I honestly like that. Let's take a damn shot, boys. Take a damn shot, Chroman Oak. It's time. Oh my god, I thought that was intercepted. Scary catch. Down by four. Two minute warning hits. Still got three timeouts. Honestly, the clock is not the problem here. It's not. We're still gonna run no huddle, but it's just converting. We have to consistently convert these first downs. We gotta get in the end zone. Field goal does us no good. A lob! These DBs are so good. Nebraska's got great DBs. That one was clamped. BJ Gibson can't hang on to it. Third and six. We're going to have to go for this. If we don't convert here, we have to go for it. Clean pocket. No! Fucking COVID. No! This man won Heisman. This man won Best Quarterback Award. This man won Player of the Year. And in the biggest game of his life, he has thrown three interceptions and one touchdown. And the game is still not over. If Florida State can stop the run, we will force a field goal and have one more opportunity. And that's a great way to start at second and nine. I tell you what, though, I watched the Oregon game. Oregon, in the same scenario, Oregon was able to pick up a first down on the ground. Can we stuff the run, gentlemen? Second and nine. We know what they're going to do. They're just going to hand the damn ball off. Oh, my God. How did you get that many yards? We know you're running it. Coach, I need you to blitz the DBs. I need you to blitz the safeties. Everybody's got to be in the box right now. We got fucking five in the box. Oh, my God. They're passing. <gasps> Coach just ran commit and Nebraska passed. You know, ironically, this is the only scenario where we have a chance to win the game, other than obviously stopping them. Because, I mean, we can score and kick the onside. Absolutely nobody to blame but ourselves for this national championship loss, though, if that's the outcome. Luke Cromano played the worst game of his life. Coach is calling pass plays on second and two when Cam Davis is the best running back of the year. This is a tough watch. This was a really tough watch. I'm not even gonna lie, but it is technically not over. A quick touchdown and onside kick. Luke Cromanoke is obsessed with throwing interceptions though. So second and inches, can he pull it off? Oh my God, can he actually pull this off? It's gonna come down to an onside kick. I think we will finally get in the end zone now. Might not be time to look at coach, boys. Might be time to get your fucking feet set and run a play. Oh my God. Luke, where were you all game? Oh my God, with no time left, this guy turned into Tom Brady. It's fucking Nathan Peter. Nope, nope, he's still Nathan Peterman. Oh my God, Chroman Oak. You single-handedly threw four interceptions in one game. In the regular season, I think you threw four total interceptions. 12 games of the regular season, you threw four interceptions. In the national championship, you threw four interceptions. I mean, that's, I mean, that's not even close to open. This game is over. Nebraska's gonna walk away with this one. It doesn't matter if it's Road to Glory or Dynasty. Nebraska is my rival. I mean, guys, I don't even need to do a Nebraska rebuild because you can watch them win the national championship so many fucking times. That hurts so bad, Chroman Oak. I would, you know, I can blame a lot of those interceptions on him, but I think the most crucial point of that game was second and two. We were putting together the best drive of our lives and coach calls a pass. Hand that fucking ball off to Cam Davis, man. You gotta do it. Fuck the Cornhusker. Ja'Cory Barney wins player of the game. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be Shaquem Howard, that DB who had two interceptions, but a hey, big ups to Nebraska. That was a great game. This is legitimately the worst performance I've ever seen out of Luke Cromano. The lights were too bright. I mean, that just makes you puke, though. Your, your best running back, Cam Davis, averaging five yards a carry, doesn't get the ball. I mean, this right here, second and two, this is how we lose the football game. Luke Cromano, it's a three-man rush, so he's got time. And I mean, what's he looking at? I mean, look, at, I mean, even Cam Davis is over. What are you looking at here? Why'd you throw that? I mean, it's sim logic. You gotta remember, it's, it's simulation. You never know why they do what they do but i mean that's a tough watch that is just not there through that jump ball like we're on the 40 brother we are in the red zone cam davis can't believe it look at cam davis cam davis is looking back like you homeless bum me and you both cam davis me and you both i will say this was a super fun rebuild though i feel like i've never felt so close to the players than i have on this one like i knew this roster inside and out i loved so many players on this roster and i really did like luke Kromanoke until the natty he he's he really oh all right next season i do want to see what this roster is gonna look like and we gotta check the fsu record book 
looks to see if we broke any records. I think this roster is gonna have a massive, massive fall. If they do, this is actually the lowest overall we've ever been. And it does make sense. I mean, we put so much time and effort into Cam Davis, Luke Kromanoak, Amari Williams, Ripkowski, all those guys. And we lose most of them. I mean, Ripkowski is still here. Chase Tony's still here. Other than that, I mean, this team's in shambles. Larry Lowe's looking all right. All right, I do gotta see the records though. All right, Florida State records career? Luke Kromanoak. He has the career passing yards for Florida State now. Delvin Cook still has rushing yards. Cam Davis. Actually, not that I look at Delvin Cooks, that stat is fucking insane. 4,400? That's crazy. I was gonna say maybe Cam Davis could have had it if he had played every year, but he didn't. He only really started his senior year. Kromanoak has passed touchdowns as well. Charles Lester has the DB career interceptions record. Sadly, both of these guys got absolutely torched in the national championship, Lester and Kromanoak. So there's kind of an asterisk on that. A little bit sad. Um, season records. Do we have any? Dalvin Cook rushed for a thousand size. I did not realize that. He's a freak. We have no season records for Florida State. Additionally, no single game records. So we did a good job developing some career guys, but we weren't able to have any standout ridiculous games. All right, gentlemen, Florida State. We brought him to the natty. We fell short, but it was an absolute blast of a rebuild. This puts a pin on Monty Jenkins' career. Florida State, you know what? Maybe you guys really should have been snubbed. I mean, that's what I just figured out. All right, hey, I love you guys. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you in the next video. You're very handsome, by the way. Peace.